Indian Association of Structural Engineers, also known as IS Struct E, was conceptualized and constituted in the year 2002 by a group of senior professional structural engineers from all over the country. IS Struct E is registered under the Society's Registration Act 21 of 1860. IS Struct E is a national apex body of structural engineers in India with a mission to promote structural engineering profession and cater to the professional needs of the structural fraternity. In the short span of two decades, association has attained an eminent position in the professional field. Its membership is valued very highly in the profession. Since inception, IAS Structi has been led by eminent structural engineers like late Sri Mahindra Raj, late Sri Sri Kumar Ghosh, Sri Subhash Chand Mehrotra, Professor Mahesh Tandran, Sri Alok Bhomik, Sri Manoj Mittal, and Professor R. Pradeep Kumar as its president. IA Structi is a permanent member of Engineering Council of India and interacts with the government on professional and policy matters related to civil and structural engineers. To expand its reach, IA Structi has collaboration with various international professional like-minded associations and institutions. IA Structi's prime objective is supporting and protecting the profession of structural engineering by upholding professional standards and acting as a mouthpiece for structural engineers in India. IA Structi endeavor to ensure that its members develop the necessary skill in structural engineering and work to the highest standards by maintaining a commitment to professional ethics and standards. IA Struct E is actively engaged in organizing several continuing professional development CPD courses for structural engineers to help them update their knowledge and advance their career paths. It also conducts refresher courses for young and practicing engineers and student-oriented programs, seminars, workshops, conferences, technical lectures and discussions related to the latest technological advancements and case studies are also organized regularly for members to enable them to continuously update their knowledge and skill set by interacting with the best minds from the industry. IAS Structi's activities are widely appreciated and known for quality technical contents. IA Structi is also actively engaged in publishing its quarterly journal Structural Engineering Digest SED, code commentaries, professional guidelines and a monthly newsletter. IA Structi's publications are becoming popular with time. IA Structi has representation in various technical committees of BIS and IRC as well. Its members are actively contributing to National Code of Formulations in the year 2020, IA Structi started national awards competition to stimulate interest in the structural engineering field and to promote innovative thinking and creativity. The awards are presented to the winners in recognition of their outstanding contribution to structural engineering in the categories which include Outstanding Structure, Outstanding Structural Engineer, Outstanding Woman Structural Engineer, Promising Young Structural Engineer, and Best Master's Thesis in Structural Engineering. IA Struct E is currently operating from four regional centers namely Eastern, Western, Northern and Southern having its headquarters in Delhi to inculcate the professional culture and provide handholding to the budding engineers. IA Struct E has its student chapters in several leading engineering institutions as well. Membership of IA Struct E is open to all civil and structural engineers engaged in structural engineering profession. Members are elected based on their qualifications and experience in different grades as per eligibility requirements prescribed in the bylaws. Each application is carefully scrutinized before electing the members. More information about IA Struct E is available on its website www.iastructe.co.in.
Hello? Yes, sir. Please start. Sir. Uh, my voice is audible. Yes, sir. Yes. Our dear friends, welcome uh, to the webinar uh, being held today. The topic is multi-wave imaging for the assessment of civil structures. And this central building notice and webinar is being organized through Zoom. Sir, your voice is lagging. About the speaker, we did from uh, is it? Uh, hello. Aapka waj, so now my yes, sir. Aapka watch break ho raha hai. Yeah, yes, sir. Now, now you. Abhi, abhi, abhi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Clear, sir. Uh, okay, Dr. Ghosh graduated from uh, Jalpur Agri Government Engineering College in Civil Engineering and thereafter he did his master's in structures uh, from Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research in 2013 and thereafter he did his PhD in structure in engineering from IIT Delhi and uh, he has been working a senior scientist in CBRI for the last uh, many years. Uh, as I said, he, he's a young scientist and has significant contribution in structural engineering, especially in developing new non-destructive test and evaluation techniques, heritage structures, structural health monitoring, multi-hazard resistant building uh, systems, uh, et cetera, and so many more things he is involved uh, uh, in the CBRI. He has received several national level awards, such as the Promising Young Secular Engineer Award from Indian Association of Secular Engineers, Indian Institution of India Young Engineers Award, and then ISNT EEC Award for excellence in con contribution in research and development, and many more. Now, brief of the topic, infrastructure, uh, uh, throughout the world are uh, uh, now deteriorated for the period of time, climate, and abrupt environmental effects and accelerated to whole degradation and weakening process. Besides, uh, conventional concrete structures, heritage structures also condi condition contribute to these threatened structural stocks. Therefore, protecting these determined structures is very essential to prevent any sudden catastrophe, failures, loss of property, and loss of countries' rich cultural heritage. Before carrying out such preservation and strengthening activities, evaluation, weakened, deteriorated, vulnerable locations is very essential without damaging these agent structures. Uh, Non-destructive test uh, evaluation techniques may not be suitable for, through, uh, for thorough understanding of the structures, of the different kinds of structures. Therefore, application of multi-level of uh, diagnosis using NDT, E techniques is very essential. Mr. Goshi is expert not only in doing such and such in CBRI, he has obtained his PhD also in the subject. And now I request that Ghosh to take over and share his experience on the subject. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Dhawan. Uh, uh, thank you for briefing about the topic.
and also describing about uh, <laughs> uh, uh, me. And uh, also, I like to share actually uh, uh, myself and Dr. Dhawan, we did PhD together at IIT Delhi, and we had uh, many happy moments in uh, our curriculum days. So today I will be talking about uh, uh, multi uh, multi wave imaging of civil structures for assessment. So uh, just let me know whether my screen is visible or not. Is the screen yes. visible? Yeah, yes, sir, visible, sir. But uh, maybe you are in the last slide. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Yes, sir. It is okay, sir. Okay. Thank no, you. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, I'm working in CSIS CBRI since last uh, more than 10 years. And uh, right now, uh, I'm also coordinator of the ADST Center of Excellence on Indian Heritage Structure, why we do conservation of Indian heritage uh, properties as a whole. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, if you see the motivation behind this topic, uh, that is a, in every field, you would require to evaluate the condition of the structure or the uh, structural elements. Recently, you have witnessed this kind of uh, failures in uh, recent times in Gurgaon or many places in uh, Mumbai, uh, where because of the chloride in the ingress, because of the uh, uh, load, uh, overloading, the structure got uh, uh, failed suddenly without any warning. So without any warning, if it is failing, it will be uh, hazardous for the human as well as the other beings. Therefore, uh, monitoring of this uh, health of the uh, uh, that particular structural element as well as structure as a whole is very important. That's Therefore, structural health monitoring or non-destructive evaluation, these terminologies are evolved in the civil engineering. And how we have used in the structural engineering, I like to uh, show these things. So uh, regarding the whole structure, if you see those uh, structures subjected to extreme uh, loading like earthquake uh, and other natural as well as man-made disasters, structure right now in situated in disjointed and degraded manner. Therefore, preservation is very much essential. Therefore, assessment of the structure at the present state, that is also very much important. And there, uh, there our roles are uh coming so what is uh non-destructive testing it is basically a non-invasive technique to determine the integrity of the material or the component of the structure as well as quantify uh, the measurement of the uh, defect characteristics suppose you have a damage uh a honeycomb or uh, you have a crack so how much crack has happened to the structure so finally uh, things will lead to the quantifications and right now also I will be covering some of the uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence based uh, research at CSIS CBRI, which will give you some glimpses about the what is uh, future uh, non-destructive evaluation industry is going towards. So these are the different parameters which needs to be evaluated like elastic modulus, density, strength, cracks and void deter uh, uh, determination, then reinforcement locations, surface hardness. So these are the some of the parameters or you can see uh, uh, measure uh, uh, quantity has to be performed. So sometimes if you see the whole structure, you will not find any exact layout at all. So there it is very difficult to find out uh, the layout or difficult to find out the damage or defects because we don't know how it was constructed. So for heritage structure, it became more difficult since I'm uh, working and as well as coordinating the heritage structure uh, center of excellence. So I'll be talking more about Heritage structures uh, in my presentation. So if you see the uh, locations, some are not accessible also. To perform NDT, it is not accessible sometimes. So you have to devise some remote NDT tool also, like drone-based investigation and all, to image those uh, damaged locations. And another problem, suppose you want to install some sensor. So a couplant is required to install with respect to the surface. So therefore, uh, all these surfaces you cannot touch, you cannot alter. So therefore, it is a analog challenge uh, with respect to that. So uh, these are the, some of the prevalent NDT techniques uh, uh, like visual, then boroscopy, then uh, smith hammer that you are very well about, about in civil engineering industry. Uh, uh, and flat jack, parallel seismic, half cell potential, magnetic pulse induction, then X-ray uh, uh, tomography, then photogrammetry, uh, uh, infrared uh, thermography, impact echo, 
uh, ultrasonic uh, testing, then uh, ground penetrating radar. And there are so many electromagnetic wave based techniques also. So here uh, my focus will be on imaging only because my research topic, uh, 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 like uh, today's talk, basically the topic of the talk is basically the multi-wave imaging. So how a different kind of waves can be used for the imaging, then how it can be uh, fused together to get maximum information out of it. So uh, it is also, we can call it the integrated non-destructive uh, evaluation testing and uh, evaluation. So it is starting from fully non-contact to the contact-based uh, sensing. So uh, uh, non-contact means you will see the drone-based or thermal imaging-based uh, testing. Then semi-contact, like where you have a wheel on the top, without damaging the structure, only wheel will be moving and uh, based on electromagnetic uh, waves, uh, the reflected signature, based on that, you will try to figure out uh, the damage or you try to map the damage, ultimately image it. Then you have a dry point contact uh, transducer system. Right now, uh, that uh, old um, uh, coupling based uh, UPV systems, they, those are getting re uh, replaced by means of dry point contact transducer, where a spring loaded system is being pressed against the surface and uh, the, that process, uh, it generates ultrasonic pulses and it propagates into the medium. I'll come back to it uh, in detail with my uh, the, as I progressing towards my presentation. Then something is called weight contact, where you put some couplings, some uh, water, something on the surface. Then you do perform uh, the NDT that is called weight, uh, weight contact, like you do a conventional uh, UPV or uh, say half cell potential test. Then you have a rigid contact where you put permanently stick the sensor with respect to the surface to continuously monitor the surface that we call uh, weight contacts uh, based sensor. Then whatever information you'll gather from different multi-sensory uh, systems that you will try to integrate together. So uh, uh, then after integration, you will try to classify them in different uh, uh, defects. So for that CNN uh, based algorithm are being used. Uh, we use uh, reverse time migrations. We use synthetic aperture focusing techniques. So these are the different names of the different uh, algorithms. What we use for the uh, um, uh, image recreation or image reconstruction of the uh, defects or in a medium, civil meaning medium. Then after that, you do a uh, fusion of different data together. Then you get a ND digital twin. That is very important. Like uh, uh, right now, you have a twin of the structure in a digital platform where all the NDT informations are in, uh, or, uh, uh, being implemented. So then uh, you have a sensory data, and then you have a uh, structural information, then you try to quantify the damage based on the uh, ND investigation. So then uh, that is called data-driven ND for quantification. So one technique is obviously not sufficient uh, to perform the NDE for a com uh, complete structure. So like I will explain some of the advantage and disadvantage of the different uh, prominent technique like thermal imaging. Thermography is measures the surface temperature. It can scan a larger area with a very less uh, time consuming and it is also a very less costly uh, matter. Similarly, but it cannot penetrate much deeper. Like uh, you can expect only say 30 to 50 mm penetration in uh, concrete or masonry structure. Even you, you, if you are using any uh, uh, impulse heating or in an active thermography state. Then impact echo, it can uh, penetrate obviously more deeper, but uh, again, this is very slow technique, sluggish technique. So, uh, but also very less costly. Uh, so somewhere we use this one also for imaging. Then generally impact echo people use for damage identification, not for imaging, but we do it, uh, do it for imaging purpose also. I'll show you the, how we develop the algorithm to convert a normal data to an image. Then uh, the ultrasound, it can de detect smaller voids or uh, defects, but penetration depth is uh, not uh, too much. So there is a uh, disadvantage. Then a GPR, this is a very rapid uh, uh, inspection te technique. It can uh, penetrate deeper. Voids are not accurately uh, detected because of the reinforcement congestion. Some, sometimes in civil engineering structure, you know, there will be so many reinforcement. And since it is like electromagnetic waves, so it will be, interfering with respect to the uh, 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 like reinforcement layers will be interfering with the electromagnetic waves. Therefore, the signatures uh, uh, got uh, weak because of these. So, uh, but uh, uh, equipment is very costly also. So there are several advantage with this, but having lots of disadvantage. So single technique is not going to be sufficient. So you need a multiple uh, number of technique combined together to get a accurate structural information. Therefore, the multi-wave imaging is coming. Now I'm coming one by one, how uh, it can be implemented. Like uh, if you see infrared thermography, infrared thermography, you can 
used in the two different way. One is passive thermography, one is called active thermography. In case of passive thermography, generally uh, we rely on natural heating sources like sunlight and uh, sun radiation basically. So uh, th this kind of uh, thing being used for moisture penet uh, moisture de detection, plumbing detection. So many pl places passive thermography is very widely used. Like suppose you have uh, some electrical fault that also you can detect from the passive thermography. Now we have active thermography. In active thermography, uh, uh, we induce some kind of heat from outside, artificial uh, heating basically by using microwave, by uh, uh, using normal halogen he uh, heaters and many heat any heating sources you try to use. Heating pads we do sometimes use. Then after heating it for some time, you would allow it to cool with time. So you see the cooling temperature and cooling uh, uh, temperature profile with time. So <clears throat> that time you try to monitor it uh, uh, in a different manner, then you try to get some signatures uh, of the heat radiations that will give you the passive uh, acti active thermal images. So this is uh, some example of uh, active, uh, sorry, passive uh, uh, thermal images. It is a Solani aqueduct, very old, uh, 175, more than 175 old years old uh, Solani aqueduct situated in Rurki itself. You can see the damaged area because of the many reason with the aging also there are moisture in years also vegetation growth and many things but say uh, 100 meter or 300 meter away you can find out the defects so that is the beauty of these techniques but again it is not uh, going to give you the deeper defects it will give you the surfacial defects then you, you can see also the uh, some kind of in a particular uh, site you can see the cracks voids uh, seepage you can see the moisture increased area you can in a blue area is showing the low temperature red is showing the higher temperature as you see the uh, legends also. So uh, this is also called a thermogram. So if you see in this, you see a seepage uh, location uh, in a normal passive thermal imaging. Uh, uh, plenty of example. If I, there are we did we did uh, many places. So this is there is something which is called active thermal imaging. So active uh, thermal imaging we do you know, when uh, you uh, excite the structure with the means of some kind of external heating sources like a flash lamp. You heat it for some time. And you will get a, some kind of uh, heating gradient with time. And then in the cooling phase or the heating phase, you will try to find out uh, um, the uh, difference in radiation. Based on some signal processing, you can find out the defects. This way you do. Like this is explained well explained here. So without any defects, you apply heating. You will set a, a, a get a, uh, this kind of time temperature curve. This is uh, one side is temperature, one is time. But if there is any kind of defects at certain location, you will find uh, there is a dip or any uh, peak in the, the time temperature curve. So that is basically because of the active thermal imaging. So uh, you have induced some kind of uh, 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 heating in the structure and you are getting back some kind of radiation pattern. And after receiving the radiation pattern with the time, you do some kind of uh, um, uh, uh, signal processing and you can find out this kind of images like you can see there are already defect embedded in the structure inside say uh, uh, 25 mm uh, deep which is not visible from outside but using thermal imaging you can find out these defects very easily so similarly for concrete we can find out how much depth we can go because of uh, by means of this kind of thermal imaging so we can uh, go say 25 mm and some places we got up to say, 35 mm also in concrete you can go in masonry structure it, it will get a little bit more because it's a porous in nature so you can see there's a masonry wall having different defects and we capture these images with time so at delta t intervals we are receiving so many images so per second we are uh, suppose uh, um, capturing 60 images so 60 multiplied by say suppose you capture a uh, one minute interval uh, uh, image uh, a video so there you will have a three six double zero number of images so those images has to be processed so after process you do a normal fft and you can find out the amplitude and phase of the image so this is some kind of signal processing so this is normal signal processing only i will show you some advanced also so there you can find out the edges in phase images you will find out the edges of the uh, defects or edges of the specimen and in amplitude image the defect characteristics is more visible which is uh, uh, different from the raw image you can see in the raw image it's not that prominent uh, only impression is visible but in the uh, amplitude or phase image the uh, signature is more clear similarly we are done for uh, 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 composites also suppose you retrofit a structure using uh, uh, suppose you have retrofit a weak con concrete structure by means of uh, FRP, CFRP, GFRP or many kind of uh, applications. 
there there is a chance that there will be a void between the cfrp uh, strip and your concrete medium so suppose there is a uh, gap in between so how will detect those so for that we also developed a technique like this is called active thermal imaging so you, four lamps are being uh, placed uh, in a group to give uh, some kind of uniform heat to the structure and uh, there also we are trying we have also uh, uh, embedded different kind of defects in in the slab uh, between the uh, cfrp layer and the uh, 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 concrete specimen to simulate the voids uh, imperfection and other things so there we have done some kind of signal processing like uh, multimodal ensemble empirical mode decomposition uh, uh, which in short term we call mimt then the principal component thermography based on uh, uh, svd then empirical orthogonal uh, function uh, decomposition then uh, thermographic signal reconstruction so there are several techniques by which you can uh, uh, process your signals whatever is coming we call it sex signal but uh, you can tell it also the thermal images so after receiving all these images after this processing you will get this kind of images so you can see the very clear image of the defects which are appearing because of this all this processing i'm not getting uh, going into the complications of the algorithms and all in this that you can get it from our uh, published papers so finally you will get this kind of defect so all the defects has been investigated by means of global thermography as well as local thermography so global where you do at a at a go uh, complete uh, thermal image of the slab then individually also you can do uh, thermal imaging suppose you know the uh, defects in a global thermography then you try to identify what is the dimension of the defect what is the characteristics of the defect so that's why you go into the local level so when you go to the local level so you heat that specimen with a very confined space with a particular heating element and then you try to find out uh, what are the signature it is coming from the uh, uh, element and that's how these are these images are uh, obtained similarly suppose uh, uh, for a very uh, old heritage structure, suppose you know uh, this is the image of uh, uh, Humayun tomb. Uh, you can see from a very uh, distance uh, places we have taken this uh, image, say 150 meter away. You can see so there are certain things. Uh, actually, sun, uh, uh, sun rays was falling on the structure from this angle. You can see the hot area here, hot area here. So this is the sun uh, rays angle. But at certain location, you will find some kind of anomalies which are not otherwise visible in the bare eye. Like in the bare eye, you will see nothing is visible, right? But say from 150 meter away, you can find out some kind of hot spots or maybe some cold spot, which is irregular. Like here, uh, a normal heating is going on because of the sun rays. Yeah, there will be some heating uh, phase. But here, uh, it is unlikely, right? Uh, why uh, in other places it is uh, green, why it is red? So because of this kind of uh, intuition, we find out like there are some defects in that. And that also, if you come closer, you will find some voids in human tomb structure. Similarly, uh, we have done it for our uh, in-house R&D we have done, like in, in, in a laboratory to find out the when to carry out this investigation, like in which time, uh, like suppose you would want to do some passive thermography, which is the best timing for that. So for that, we put different defects, we plaster it. Now we can find out these defects using the passive thermal imaging. But what time so similarly we do some kind of numerical modeling also uh, for that so for that we apply a heat source from the uh, the radiant heat, heat source and we try to see the defect characteristics and try to find out the uh, appropriate timing like we could find out the appropriate timing for the, uh, the active uh, thermal uh, passive thermal imaging is say three o'clock in the afternoon or maybe in the morning say seven o'clock so that kind of uh, observation we could find out that there are different kind of yeah, heating or cooling characteristics in the sun. So you can see th these defects also. There are several uh, defects uh, got embedded. Now this uh, 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 this is all about the thermal imaging. Now I'm coming to the uh, ultrasound. So ultrasound is basically one uh, uh, particular frequency of sound, uh, which is more than 20 kilohertz, which is already uh, uh, in use in non-destructive evaluation of metals. Uh, concrete and all then it is also in used in the medical science uh, sonar uh, then geophysics many places ultrasound is being used and here uh, we'll uh, present about ultrasonic imaging so what is ultrasound basically uh, it's a basically uh, a sound wave uh, beyond 20 kilohertz got generated due to some uh, uh, piezoelectric excitation which convert the electrical energy into a mechanical energy and vice versa and uh, this is how it uh, happened. 
you can see uh, uh, if there is any kind of defects, it will interact, it will uh, reflect back these waves. And finally, you can find out the uh, defect based on the travel time and all. So this is one of the representation of the same. So you can see there's a pulsar receiver. We generate the electrical signal and that electrical signals uh, uh, converted into a mechanical uh, uh, vibrations or you can say uh, uh, disturbances in the medium by means of a piezoelectric crystal. Then that waves, the disturbance will propagate is similar to the seismic wave. You can just uh, imagine about the, whatever, how the seismic wave propagate. Similar to that, it is also having different kind of modes of propagations like compressional wave or PA wave, secondary wave or the S wave or relay wave or uh, uh, that uh, surface wave, you can say. Similarly, here also you'll have lots of propagations and all. Then finally, you will receive these waves in a uh, in a receptor or say trans, uh, another transducer. That same thing will be given input to the uh, pulse uh, generator, or finally it will be displayed to uh, the oscilloscope. This is how it got generated. Suppose there is no defect, you will have a only one peak. This is uh, called uh, FE, uh, first Fourier transform of that waveform. So suppose you have a two defects, you will have a two different peaks. So, so crack one and crack two. So that's how it uh, goes. And uh, this is what I was mentioning about the seismic waves and the ultrasound waves. It is similar. You will get different modes of uh, propagation like uh, compressional CR and relay. Uh, so So there are several uh, transducer also, which is being used for the investigation of the uh, 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 concrete. Similarly, we can also use in a different methods like direct. Uh, 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 in concrete structures. Recently, this is the uh, new innovations in the uh, in, uh, ultrasound. You can see the. Uh, different kind of uh, transducer system, which is not necessary to be coupling based. It is basically dry point contact based transducers, which can be placed against the surface, which will uh, generate a waves and it will interact with uh, different voids and finally you get some images. So uh, there are several factors which affect the ultrasound like uh, smoothness, contact of the surface, then temperature, moisture, uh, reinforcement steel, etc. Uh, you can see the reinforcement bar, some experiment I like to show you now. Uh, suppose there are uh, uh, three rivers. Uh, in the beginning, I was showing you some image about a failure of a uh, structure which failed because of the corrosion, excessive corrosion. Now, here in this particular uh, exercise, I'd like to show you. This is one of my PhD students is working on. Uh, he's trying to uh, uh, find out the damage due to uh, um, uh, corrosion. Uh, to how we can image that kind of thing or how much confidence we can have. So basically, ultrasound is being used for not only for imaging to assess the uh, 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 assess the corrosion state of a structure, corrosion in new dam damage state in a structure. So uh, we are basically alter, uh, working on an alter uh, alternative technique rather than half cell potential. So this is how the uh, experimental setup to induce accelerated corrosion. You can see the positive terminal is connected to the anode and of the specimen. And this is how the picture. Then you do imaging perpendicular to the river to find out the state of the river. So this is the array. And uh, this is how we do have some kind of processing. So um, uh, this is it, basically the SH wave base, uh, CR horizontal wave base uh, transductions. And this has been, uh, this was, this is the research work of uh, uh, Mr. Teja Kuchipudi of my, uh, that is my PhD student. Uh, so you can see the image of the river at different cross sections. If you do a scanning at different levels, similarly, if you keep on scanning at different interval, you will get a 3D image of the river. So if you get a 3D image, now you, we are doing a some kind of accelerated stage of uh, corrosion experiment where we can find out uh, the images at different stage of corrosion. So finally, you will see with as uh, the corrosion is progressing. Suppose at pristine stage, you can see all three rivers in a 3D uh, image. Uh, but here only 2D representation is given, but all the image, uh, it is in a volume. So therefore it's a 3D image. So uh, you can see at different stages, the river is intact. So at stage uh, three or uh, T4, T5, T4, up to T4, river is intact. 
So suddenly we are seeing that one river is disappearing because only one river is subjected to accelerated corrosion and that is getting uh, vanished from the image. So therefore we are suspecting this vanish is because of the corrosion is happening. So therefore we uh, extract the river and we find out that uh, the mass loss of the river be, uh, of this specimen was around 5.259 percent and corrosion happened in the this particular zone only and in middle little little bit of intact so therefore we validated uh, with numerous uh, testing that that is um, uh, yeah and this work we are doing with the collaboration with uh, professor obhijit anguli also uh, right earlier he was in iit delhi right now he is in the uk also. Uh, and right now, you can see the specimen too also the similar characteristics so we thought why can't we do some kind of apply some machine learning algorithm and try to find out the uh, uh, kind of um, uh, stages it is in so the full corrosion stage uh, has been uh, um, uh, segmented into three different category so it is uh, uh, you can one of the paper we published like a pre cracking stage cracking stage and post cracking stage like that we name it here we have um, uh, named it like uh, initial stage then uh, in the uh, uh, middle we, we have a corrosion stage and post corrosion stage like that we name it like you can see in this pristine stage the moderate corrosion high corrosion and you can see at the later stage uh, uh, um, like too much high uh, rate of corrosion more, low moderate and high this kind of category we uh, put it after doing the, this type of Kremins clustering and you can find out the damages like this so this is how we apply machine learning and uh, uh, ultrasound to predict the stage of corrosion. And similarly, if we apply, say, half cell potential, the result of half cell you can see here, it cannot give you the accurate location of the defects. Uh, 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 like it, it is giving you so much a big zone. It is not ever at all able to predict the uh, 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 river damage. So half cell, obviously, you know, there are lots of disadvantages which we are trying to address through this ultrasonic technique development. So we can uh, just go through some of the papers we recently published. Uh, so basically, this particular uh, exercise has been carried out by uh, my PhD student and by us uh, uh, based on the sensitivity of CR waves to image the corrosion deterioration, imaging of deteriorated uh, portion of the river, then uh, amplitude-based classification of the corrosion severity, application of machine learning. So these are the, some of the papers published by our group. So we can just uh, have a look. Then I'm coming to the crack. Crack in a concrete is very dangerous, you know, uh, it will lead to lots of uh, ingress of uh, moistures and other uh, deleterious chemicals and other things. So that will further widen these cracks. So therefore, repairing of this crack is essential. But before repair, can we assess how much deep these cracks are? So this was our effort. There is no technique right now except this Fourier transmission based uh, technique, Fourier, that's called FTC, uh, Fourier transmission coefficient based technique uh, in ASTM. And it is implemented in the, your prosaic equipment where you uh, place your two uh, ultrasonic transducer at an equal distance from the crack and equal intervals and then you try to measure the crack. But that is not an accurate method of measuring the crack. So we thought, why can't you measure, uh, image the crack? So that is our effort. Uh, and uh, recently, this, some of the paper got uh, published in the very appropriate journals. Uh, and here we are uh, going far one step ahead. Like why? one crack angle only vertical crack there can be several direction of crack like say uh, uh, it can be from zero degree to 90 degree different directional crack can be existing in a structure so can you image those cracks so therefore we developed a half, half skip based uh, algorithm half skip we call half skip tfm or half skip strap uh, where we consider bottom as a another reflecting zone so after doing some kind of uh, image process uh, we can find out the damage or the cracks in a very accurate manner like you can see uh, for uh, 75 degree 90 degree uh, seven uh, again this kind of images we can get so normal soft image will give you this but half skip steve him will give you this so this is one of the method we have developed and already been published in the open forum and finally we can find out the kind of a crack profile the depth and other crack characteristics the angle of the cracks and all everything you can find out from this so this is also a, some kind of simulation exercise you can find out or like you can get the notch of the crack. This uh, exercise has been done by my PhD student, Mr. Teja Kujipudi. And uh, you can see, suppose a, a real crack is there, arbitrary direction, how we can map it. So that also uh, we have mapped uh, with some kind of accuracy. Uh, you can see the uh, crack like this. 
now for other specimens also we have done some kind of mapping now i'm coming to the uh, um, exercise where we are trying to auto automatize this detection so can we uh, automatize and say the uh, uh, tell about the direction of the crack or the angle of the crack which is situated so we obtain the ultrasonic images from the uh, uh, specimen then we train it in uh, different platform then finally so uh, in these also we are also applying not only half skip tfm we will also apply uh, uh, pwi so uh, uh, that pwi is also very effective to find out the defects in different uh, directions so uh, finally uh, what is the output you can see that uh, train this is the training set and finally test set is like this and you can get vertical crack of 0.9 degree similarly we have done it for different degree uh, 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 crack angles so delaminescence uh, uh, debonded reverse crack in, inclined crack of having uh, detection probability of say 0 0.98 0 0.99 like that we have detected and that has been also uh, published in the... yeah. so uh, 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 ResNet has been used for this now for more detail you can go through these uh, three publications uh, from our group uh, one of the publication is published in scientific reports in nature. Uh, uh, so basically, this particular method, if I'm uh, summarizing, is basically uh, the method uh, which is used for corrosion assessment. Uh, it's a new application. Uh, and applicability of half scale TFM for vertical planar defects and supplementing with other uh, techniques. Then automatic uh, detection using uh, 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 ultrasound and TFM. That is the uh, contribution of this particular area. Now I'm coming to the impact echo. Impact echo, you know, is a particularly uh, uh, because of the uh, impact over the structure, you will get a different kind of uh, stress waves. These stress waves are being uh, received at different uh, intervals, say 300 mm interval, and you try to find out the quality of a concrete. That is quite qualitative investigation, right? So based on the quality investigation, you can say this concrete is good or bad, and you can get some kind of spectrum also out of it. Suppose if the concrete is good, they will get a uh, uh, FFT uh, where a single peak is there. Suppose quality is deteriorated, um, a small crack is uh, there, so you'll get a two peak. Then uh, suppose you have a, a bigger crack or a complete de delamination, you'll get a peak shift. You'll get a one peak, but it is a peak shift. And suppose a completely gone case, like not good at all that kind of concrete so you'll get a complete this kind of frequency distribution so very serious condition so this kind of things are available but we thought why we will do that we'll try to image we try to see what is there inside and uh, based on that we try to uh, uh, image so uh, so uh, uh, the same kind of thing we have tried to do do here so this is called b scans so you stack all these uh, impact echo based uh, stress waves uh, signals in a so this is the b scans so over the b scans we try to apply different uh, empirical mode based uh, decomposition based uh, algorithms to find out different uh, modes and finally to map the defects in the different planes so this is the kind of algorithms we used and find out defects with a uh, uh, certainty like these are the defects situated at different angles so the ab application of impact echo, you can see in the concrete and masonry structures uh, uh, is uh, uh, well defined here using imaging. And this is one of the paper we published in mechanical systems and signal processing for your uh, detailed review if you want to do. So here we are doing sizing using impact echo. We are localizing the defects using impact echo. So these are the some of the use of impact echo. Now I'm coming to the uh, uh, ground penetrating radar. So ground penetrating radar is a very uh, well-known techniques used in geophysics. Sometimes they are used in a concrete structure also now, nowadays. So it has a th three different components. One is called control unit, one is called antenna, and another is power supply. So all these three things are required. Suppose this is a defect or anomaly. So at different locations, this uh, transmitter fires these uh, electromagnetic waves, and that is getting received received at the same location. That is called we call it TR or TX, uh, uh, TX or RX. So at the same location, and that's how if it is plotted with respect to the distances that's called b scan and you can see a hyperbola is getting generated because of these uh, uh, trans transductions so uh, <clears throat> here we do lots of experiment with respect to that and also investigate different kind of uh, normal concrete structure heritage structure with using that 
so uh, a radar waves you can see uh, suppose you put a defects inside that and you can find out the defects and here also we do lots of uh, signal processing algorithm development for accurate imaging and all and we can find out the planar uh, reinforcement layer we can find out the uh, other defect duct and everything uh, inside a concrete layer i will also come to the one of the case study we have performed in the very near area like selenium aqueduct you can see these uh, thermal images of these so this structure got deteriorated over the period of time. It's very old structure, 19, uh, sorry, 1842 structure. So right now traffic is on over this, uh, along the, uh, across this river, over this uh, uh, carriageway of the, uh, carriageway of the uh, aqueduct. So in this carriageway, there are several damages that we observed. These are the, some of the details <laughs> of the uh, uh, um, uh, structure. I'm going not going to discuss in this particular lecture on the structural details of the Solani aqueduct, the, the wooden piles and all these things were used earlier uh, during the British time. This was the uh, our area of concern where you can find out lots of vegetation goes, lots of deterioration, and one side you have full water, so you don't know how the structural system it is there. So here our objective is to find out the structural system of a aqueduct with the help of some kind of non-destructive evaluation that is here. A uh, uh, electromagnetic wave based GPR, ground penetrating radar. So, this was our stage, what, 285 meter stage, where we have done some kind of uh, cross scanning as well as along scanning. And uh, these apertures along the aperture, we have uh, taken the data. You can see in the periodic, you will get some kind of uh, hyperbolas. And these hyperbolas are very uh, regular in pattern. So, we thought there may be some kind of cavities and all. Uh, uh, so therefore it requires some more investigation so we have done some cross scanning also so this was some along scanning results and some cross scanning results in cross scanning results uh, we could observe like this is present up to this much not this uh, whatever signature was coming in a periodic interval that is not continued this is up to this much and also there is another inclined layer which is like this so we could find out this is a masonry arch structure which is supporting the aqueduct uh, uh, superstructure and there is the inspection gallery. So after lots of uh, research which is actually right now closed, nothing is existing. So we could find out the trace the structural configuration based on the non-destructive evaluation. So it is not only the quality assessment, you can understand using non-destructive evaluation, you can find out the structural system. And you can see there are some tips of the arts which is uh, visible here. And finally, we could create the geometry of the structure based on the non-destructive evaluation. We can find out the layers, number of layers in the pavements or the, in the carriageway. So this is the structural uh, drawing. So this is the, in 3D, how we will see the drawing. Okay. And this was the carriageway. So it was completely hollow, uh, which is otherwise not visible using normal light. Similarly, uh, there is another site in, uh, in Haridwar, near Haridwar. You can see all the places, water is coming, uh, water body is there. So, so there uh, we did some kind of investigation in the structure for the probable uh, damages and all. We could find out uh, different layers in the uh, ground after doing lots of processing. Also, we could find out uh, there are certain uh, places where uh, uh, in the roof uh, they have used jacquard stoop. So, at periodic interval, you will find some metallic insertion that is uh, otherwise from the inside it is nothing is visible because of the uh, Fall ceiling plaster and all. Uh, it is a very old uh, structure. Um, uh, uh, Professor Cordley used to live in this <laughs> uh, dam coty. That's why it's uh, called dam coty. So similarly, we have done it for many heritage structures like the Taj Mahal, Minar, and many places. This type of uh, ground penetrating radar investigation. Right now, we are also uh, in doing in, in Delhi many many places. And finally, uh, uh, you will use some kind of framework to find out the damage uh, in a structure. Uh, so this is called a machine learning based um, uh, technique where you find out that kind of defects, like suppose there is a dampness, so we could find out using visual image. Suppose there is a crack, we could find out that is a crack with that kind of uh, probability, a different, uh, uh, yeah. Similarly, we do it for uh, uh, some kind of uh, drone based investigation, the remote investigation that also we do using this type uh, of techniques. So in uh, remotely also you can see the different kind of defects, so which is otherwise not visible. We can access and uh, do it very quickly. Similarly, uh, we do uh, not only uh, drone-based uh, thermal imaging, we do uh, photogrammetry also to find out the damages in the structure. Suppose after doing a 3D reconstruction, you can find out the damages. 
then finally you can annotate the structure of different kind different defects of different kinds so uh, this is the kind some kind of raw images you try to find out from your database we uh, we have generated a very huge database based on our side investigations and all then you try to process those and to classify the new uh, images suppose you want to uh, take it uh, using some kind of drone and all then you try to find out the defects and try to uh, annotate it with respect to different kind of defects like cracks corrosion and all so that also we do we can do it here so uh, that's all we uh, generally used uh, different spectrum of the uh, webs like in uh, vi uh, vi this is a visual image imaging so visual imaging thermal imaging impact echo or the stress uh, wave based imaging like uh, ultrasound based imaging gpr then uh, uh, in infrared thermography so uh, recently we have also developed one technology that also we have transferred to the indian msme like you can see uh, using ultrasound you can find out the defect inside a uh, concrete structure or a masonry structure so that is uh, all from my side also um, uh, in i am also coordinating a center of excellence on indian heritage structures where uh, our ex uh, uh, vice president of india mr venkia naji ji had uh, inaugurated and this is the center where we uh, uh, are working on several activities so from seismic vulnerability assessment to uh, non destructive evaluation to develop a physical or digital twins and also some kind of dissemination and also some work uh, related to the tunneling uh, and all all these activities we do here at our center and uh, you know in the cbri there are so many uh, facets of structural engineering building materials and all we do research so i thought i will share what we are doing also so uh, non destructive evaluation is one of the key area of research for this and uh, uh, suppose if you need any kind of assistance any of you please let us know we can help you out thank you thank you all so i also like to acknowledge uh, uh, professor abid mukherjee of professor abid ganguly who was my phd supervisors uh, then uh, dr surendra benival is hina gupta then teja uh, sai kuchipuri who is, who is my phd student uh, who uh, i have shown he, one of uh, many of his work then uh, mr avinash kumar who is also my phd student so thank you all uh, for your attention and uh, for your cooperation and thank you i strictly for giving me the opportunity and the platform to uh, give uh, uh, my uh, uh, research <laughs> uh, outcome and to present uh, in front of such learned uh, gathering thank you i'll be happy to give this kind of lectures in future also thank you and thank you dhawan sir for your untiring effort uh, uh, i can understand you were same enthusiast uh, when we met in iit delhi and also still now you are continuing and hats off to you sir <laughs> thank you so much uh, the, the question please uh, please free to ask uh, yes yeah, so there are few more. questions in the uh, q and a box please, i can uh, ask sir can you give me okay yes sir so the, the one question is from uh, jaharak uh, karim in modern construction such as dry grade structures which type of test are preferred where the ex exterior structure is steel and facade okay so if it is a exterior uh, steel structure is there uh, suppose it is a facade so there may be some defects in the facade itself so for that infrared thermography will be much more useful and suppose there is a, 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 a connections between facade and your internal walls and all so they are also suppose there are multiple layers this uh, testing is depending on site to site how how suppose there is a facade and about, after that you have a, uh, a void space like air then you have a, another structure so in that case maybe uh, uh, this kind of testing may not be useful so for that you have to go for a contact based testing and uh, uh, for facade itself you can test using uh, this uh, infrared thermography as well as the visual uh, photogrammetry and uh, uh, visual um, imaging from that you can find out the damages okay so thank you sir the another question is the from uh, mr jahara karim again what is the reason that diagrid structures are not adopted in india even after it's been a decade old in foreign uh, yeah that there is several uh, being structural engineer i will try to attempt your question uh diagrid structures are uh, uh, not attempted because of the uh, several reason because of the uh, kind of uh, uh, requirement by the clients uh, because of the uh, uh, you know uh, soil characteristics here so if your better structural systems are available 
so why we'll go for that kind of uh, system so there are several uh, uh, designer requirements architectural requirements so uh, satisfying that if some suppose uh, is some days clients are asking for that kind of structural system, yeah we can go for that okay sir uh, mrs sangeeta which asks please share the timelines for an actual project and the cost incurred in carrying out these tests were you able to submit it uh, sorry were you able to submit remedial measures or a retrofitting scheme based on the investigations uh, yeah it depends on the volume of the work uh, if you see uh, like suppose the volume is less uh, uh, it depends on is it basically a quality questions um, depending on the volume of the work how much uh, we are busy on other projects and all and uh, how uh, the, whatever technique i showed you that is basically a uh, con non contact based testing mostly non contact based testing so this doesn't take much time so say within uh, um, uh, few days only we submit our reports and also recommendation based on the NDT we uh, recommend different kind of structural repair so that also we do submit uh, within say uh, one month or so all these things okay thank you sir uh, there is another question from Mr. Satyan Ramani which method is suitable for having underneath soil strata or irregularity check below very thick raft say 4-5m and having uh, congested in uh, means reinforcement uh, uh, can you please repeat again yes sir which method is suitable for having underneath soil strata or irregularity check uh, below very thick raft say 4 5 m and having congested reinforcement yeah that is a very very nice question so this is uh, not a simple technique by which uh, you can use a normal NDT techniques because the same thing we also encounter in many places suppose you are testing a tunnel you'll face this type of scenario. You're testing a raft of very huge thickness, you'll face the same scenario. Like where your conventional technique will not be useful. Suppose you want to test the underneath soil. Okay, underneath soil, beneath the raft, having so much of a reinforcement. So first thing, uh, ultrasound is better compared to GPR, electromagnetic wave-based technique. Because electromagnetic waves basically will be getting reflected back from the reinforcement congestion suppose there is no congestion you can use gpr or electromagnetic wave based technique very reliably suppose there is a congestion then ultrasound is the alternative but again ultrasound has a limitation like it cannot go into the soil layer and give you information so for that electrical resistivity is the recent technique we are using to find out investigating the soil layer and suppose you have some access uh, not from the raft side maybe from the other side from the soil side then also we try to take many ERT lines to uh, electric, electric resistivity tomography lines to find out any kind of anomalies wires inside the soil layer. So uh, they, this is a very uh, good challenge and we are trying to address through many other other NDT techniques also. Okay, sir. The another question is any upcoming workshop at CBRI Rudki related to assessment of structures by imaging techniques? Uh, yeah, recently okay. uh, related to the heritage uh, structures, we had a, a workshop recently and there, it, it, this was one of the, uh, yeah, and also uh, whatever feedback you are giving, maybe a dedicated session we can uh, organize on imaging of different waves. Uh, suppose you have seen around five, six waves. So maybe C I will ask uh, CBRI coordinator who is coordinating this uh, training workshop, uh, I'll ask if, if he can organize the, for that. Yeah, thank you, sir. Another question is from Mr. Mohammad Azuruddin. If we want to implement in our projects for building assessment, what about tools and equipments? Uh, tools and equipment, you know, uh, these are a uh, little costly. But again, suppose if you uh, ask CBRI to do, uh, yeah, we have some certain charges and all. And we can do it for you. And also there are certain other players also in private also. Several people have. But again, they doesn't have the uh, uh, expertise to uh, visualize the data or to comprehend what is uh, they are getting from the NDT tools. Sometimes uh, many places you will find so many professionals that they are using different tools. But what the tools are giving, that is basically having lack of expertise. So that's why we're conducting many skill development courses to uh, teach them, uh, to make them understand actually how to interpret the data. So, yeah, CBRI can do it for you if you wish. 
ओके सर जसना जमाल आस्क विच मेथड वुड यू सजेस्ट कंपेरेटिवली एक्यूरेट रिजल्ट फॉर क्लोराइड इंड्यूस्ड कोरोजन री एनफोर्समेंट डैमेज डिटेक्शन एंड सरफेस क्रैक मैपिंग okay right now with the alt, uh, alternative method that we have developed uh, based based on uh, ultrasound uh, that we are finding it very interesting and very accurate also compared to half cell potential otherwise half cell is the method uh, that you can use but for crack again you don't have uh, accurate method till date so for that whatever the conventional epb is having the fourier transmission coefficient based ftc method you can use yeah. Uh, yeah okay sir uh, uh, mohammad azuruddin again asks on thermal images of humayu tomb what is the level of accuracy we can expect uh, yeah that depends on many things level of accuracy means you can get uh, qualitatively as well as quantitatively this is the area this is the zone where the damage can happen so that has to be verified and many a places we have verified because all these things were calibrated beforehand in the laboratory before going into the site because what type of heat characteristics you are going to get from the site so that has been calibrated in the uh, beforehand only uh, thank you sir the another question from subra maji uh, thank you for your yeah, presentation hi, sir <laughs> <laughs> very informative presentation in the scans that you have shown the specimen were flat any implications of these uh, imaging techniques on structures with with curvature uh, yes uh, it is there is so, uh, many information actually Subra is also uh, did his PhD under my uh, guides uh, supervision. The, uh, uh, he is from uh, Katin University. Thank you, Subra, uh, for raising this question. This is very he is very uh, learned person in this NDT uh, community, and uh, so I'll uh, uh, give you um, uh, the answer of your question. So basically, if you see a planar defects, yeah, you will have a, a particular directivity of the uh, uh, reflected waves. suppose you have a different kind of different shape of defects so you have a different kind of directivity of the reflected signatures so for that we have also trying to develop uh, uh, this half cell uh, half skip or um, um, uh, half skip based to total focusing and all so which is considering the directivity of the reflectors so for that kind of uh, curvature or directivity we can again consider th that also in our imaging and that is having influence to of the image also so for that also some kind of calibration study has to be performed before giving some kind of verdict in the real field so that we have done it we have some kind of data bank with us so based on our data bank we can say like this kind of curvature is there so based on ultrasound so there is many other uh, web based techniques has to be uh, explored uh, be because suppose some, some defects is in a cylindrical form and you are using some kind of thermal imaging so you will see a some kind of plane only you will see a rectangle only so projection of that kind of defects you will only, only able to see in a uh, thermogram or so so you are very true but yeah there are certain other technique we are trying to apply by means of that we are trying to do it and also suppose you have access to the other face of the structure this is one sided access structure i have talked about suppose one have a other access uh, suppose you are access addressing a column so in that case you can uh, move your array move your antenna move your in, uh, uh, particular sensor in other directions to find out the kind of a shape of the defects so from that some kind of curvature also it is possible to detect yeah yes sir. thank you sir this is the last question sir what is the uh, mr ganesh uravansi asked what is the difference between normal image captured by mobile camera and thermal image yeah mobile image is basically whatever you are getting in a visible band uh, a visible band is basically your rgb value you have a rg and b values that is consisting your visible uh, image and that visible image doesn't have the information of any temperature difference it is having only rgb information but thermal image will have temperature information that that temperature uh, 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 temperature information can be interpreted as defects crack honeycombing seepage etc based on our previous experiences suppose you have some data banks the data bank is right now we have it like for uh, moisture you will have a blue uh, or uh, low temperature region so like that you have some kind of ex experiences about the defects so that you can find out from the thermal images which you cannot find out from a normal visual image yes sir he is uh, again asked which equipment can be used to take thermal image 
uh, thermal imaging camera. Uh, right now, there are several ranges of cameras that, uh, that are available. Uh, the, so the, in thermal image, uh, imaging camera also, there are different types. Suppose you are investigating in a concrete structure or a masonry structure, you will use long wave thermal imager. That we call it LWIR. Then something is called, suppose you are investigating a, uh, uh, using uh, active thermal imaging, there we use mid-wave IR, M -M -W -IR. Depending on the different wavelengths which you want to investigate, you have to choose your camera. So there are several companies like Fluke, there like uh, FLUR, uh, there are several companies which actually uh, manufacture this kind of cameras. So using this kind of camera, you can capture. And these are costly also. Like if you... Uh, 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 procure low cost uh, 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 sensors, those may not be very much uh, correct. So, at least four or five lakhs uh, sensors mm -hmm. will be good enough for the investigation. Yeah, yeah so thank you very much, sir. Over to you, Dhavan, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Ghosh, we are grateful for sparing such a valuable time and giving such an excellent presentation on multi-wave imaging for the assessment of fuel success is such an important topic where engineers for the to detect the damages by machine learning and IoT. Uh, Dhaban sir, your voice is breaking. It uh, non destructive elevation, the challenge is it? Hello, Aapka yeah, voice uh, break or is audible now? Yes, yes. Uh, audible now? Yes, yes, audible. See the important things of uh, need of uh, non destructive elevations, challenges with heritage structures, remote uh, sensing, application of sensors. Uh, I mean, uh, integrating and the E based on the multi imaging, you are really told the, the application of non destructive elevation, which can detect the, the damage and the location at the right, right and appropriate time. So, we, on behalf of the ISXP, thank you once again for sparing valuable time and uh, sharing your vast knowledge in the field of non effective test evaluation of existing sectors. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You know.